G'day, my name is Ma, and I've just collected 20 pallets at the start of cyclone season. My goal is to collect 20 pallets and try and find as many cool colours as possible. I don't know what the species are on these pallets. All that I know are the ones that are not pine, so it's not pine is what I'm looking for. There is a couple thrown in. I've spoken to a timber guru of 40 years experience, and he's going to clear it all up for us. 19 pallets. Just 19. And I'll promise 20 pallets, but this one is so awesome, it deserves its own video. But here is my big secret to finding the good stuff. I just keep driving fast all the time until I find what I want and I don't take what I don't want. Just leave it there. Sometimes you can simply drive the streets in an industrial area, spot some pallets near the bins, uh, or just go in and ask, are these going to the dump? If the answer is yes, just take it, recycle it, turn that pallet into something else other than landfill. Hello? I think I've just hit the jackpot. Check this out. I was dumping some green waste at the tip. Massive pile of salvageable timber. I didn't take it, but there's wood everywhere out there. Throughout the video, I want to throw in a heap of old footage and old projects of what I could actually do with these pallet slabs. One, to get the juices flowing, and two, to get your ideas of what I should do with these slabs in the near future. So please let me know down below. The EcoFlow Delta Portable Power Station. It's a massive battery. There are four AC outlets on the back and heaps of DC outlets on the front for all your tech to get you out of strife when the power goes out. It has taken me a bit over two hours to bust all these pallets down and get them inside the shed. Cyclone crisis averted. To help me keep track of all the timings for each step of this process, I'm going to test out and use Tradeify. It is an all-in-one job management system for tradies or punters like me. And this timekeeping feature alone is just the best. Two hours, 15 minutes to shoot and pull all the nails out. The keen eye would have spotted the blue pallets. In five years, I think I've only picked up about four of these. Why? That's because they're not for the taking. These ones were in the bin, and if I don't take them, they are going in the ground. You've got to ask yourself though, are they worth the effort? They are often split, rotted, full of nails, and mostly falling apart. Short answer is yes, they are amazing timber. Gonna say, first one, got to beat. It's gonna be a long day. 50 minutes on the metal detector for 188 slats of help. It was only one hour and 10 minutes to put the first straight edge on all of this timber. And that lighting fast speed is all because of this new straightening jig that I've just made and these quick release clamps. They're the best solution I've found for working with all the different thicknesses of timber. And this is the one job that really does feel like it takes forever. There is a reason that I've been keeping all of the individual pallets stacked in their individual piles as I work through each stage of the process. And that is because now they all have to go through the thicknesser and to save time winding the thicknesser up and down, which is very annoying, that is probably the most efficient way to do it. So everything's got to go through the thicknesser, both sides to get a nice clean face ready for gluing.
As promised, here is the guru with all the good oil on timber. Aussie timber for now. Tasmanian oak isn't an oak, it's three different trees. Australia has seven of the 10 hardest timber on the planet, according to the Jinky Sky. Gum trees are hardwoods. All eucalypts are gum trees, but not all gum trees are eucalypts. Tasmanian hue and pine isn't actually a freaking pine. So everything else in Australia just gets called an oak. Australia doesn't actually have any true oaks, but we get silky oak, she oak, bull oak. It's all a big load of oak. Oakly doakly. Clear as mud. I've ripped all the pallets into two different sizes. This is to reduce waste and to get the slabs as thick as possible. I've gone with a 50 mil batch and an 85 mil batch. This can be whatever you need or whatever the timber allows. Here is all the broad pallets and here is all the thinner pallets. This is the safer later pile, like the pile used for this box, using up all the scraps. And this is the waste, very thin strips. I don't want these. They are gonna go to the green waste dump and return to nature. This, this massive pile is all the stretches off the 19 pallets. Not gonna use them in this video. However, it adds to the, is it worth the effort pile of timber. Starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it's time to glue. This only took about an hour and 15 minutes. But just remember, I have had a lot of practice with the glue bottle. I live in a cyclone zone part of the world. So picture this, the power has gone out. The fridge freezer are melting. Everyone is hot and sweaty, getting frustrated. You can bring this out to the shed and get some woodwork done. Also, there is massive Black Friday deals happening right now. Check out the link below. Okay, I've got most of that 50 mil slat timber up on the bench here. I'm just going through and randomizing all the different colors and thicknesses and just looking for any dog's balls on a canary situations. And what I mean by that is any thick pine with very large knots. Uh, and the other one, although it's beautiful timber, there is a couple of pieces of really dark, thick red timber. Rip them down the guts, make them thin and don't make it so obvious. For the final session, I like to put a straight edge on all the slabs, whether they're gonna go through the table saw or just ready for further cut. Um, you can do this however you want. Use a hand plane, circular saw, run them over the joint if you've got one. Do whatever you've got to do to clean up the timber. What I like to do for speed and ease is throw a length of angled steel onto the slab and run them all through the saw. Gives me a quick artificial straight edge and it is super fast. I'll send one side across the jointer to get it nice and flat. Then I'll send everything through the thicknesser, get everything nice and parallel and flat and the same thickness. If you don't have the big machines, I've got the video on back to basics right up here. So busting down 19 pallets and turning them into glorious slabs of timber has taken me about 12 hours. Now, if I'm gonna pay myself about 70 bucks an hour plus tax, this pile of wood owes me about $924 in labor. Now I know the possibilities of all of this timber and I'm very confident that I can make that labor money back. Just at a glance, there is nine slabs suitable for hallway tables and it does not take much effort to knock up some frame for those. And going back to the back to basics video, I'm pretty confident I can get at least 300 bucks for some basic hallway tables. So the big question of the video, is this worth it? My fur coat it is. 
I've picked up these pallets for free. I've spent enjoyable time, enjoyable woodworking time, preparing all the timber. Now I get to do more woodwork and turn these slabs into creative things. Now this is a hobby slash side hustle. I love to make things, I also love to sell things. So worth it for sure. Cassiola on the side, happy days. I have 15 slabs of pallets. Varying sizes, but basically this one, took me 40 minutes to make. Is it worth it? Yeah, nah, yeah. That means, yes, yes, it's worth it. Okay, catch you later. Uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing this video around, that would be absolutely unreal.